Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about the fascinating story of the stethoscope. Uh, probably the most identifiable feature of a physician besides their white lab coats would be their stethoscope, which seems to be always a part of us and is one of the most useful tools that we have in our arsenal against illness and disease. But the stethoscope didn't start off life looking like this. Um, it actually started off looking more like this toilet roll with a hole drilled down the center. The first stethoscope was created by a French physician, René Lenoc. I hope I pronounced that right, as uh, it's French. Um, and prior to his invention, even though it looks crude by today's standards, in order for me to listen to your heart, I would have to get you to disrobe and then I would have to stick my ear onto your chest. So you could imagine that's quite a violation of personal space and privacy. And in Victorian society, that probably didn't go down too well. So this stethoscope that he designed is almost like a telescope, but for the ear. So you put your ear on one side and you place the other end onto the, the patient. So this was a huge advance for its time. Later on, the modern stethoscope, the binaural, which means bi meaning two, an oral meaning ear, with two prongs uh, came into existence. And this is the form that's still in use, in common use today. Um, the components are the earbuds, then there's a transmitting tube, which transmits the sound from the patient's body uh, from this bell and diaphragm. Um, in old photos in those uh, black and white, sorry, um, black and white films, you may occasionally see an actor putting the stethoscope in the wrong way around, but it actually has a direction. You see, these prongs are angled to follow the path of your ear canal when you put it in. So if the doctor, if, if this is me here, I put it in this way, so it follows the path of my ear. If I put it in the other way, that's backwards. So occasionally you would see that on some of the older films. But uh, modern films, uh, usually they have um, guidance from experts, so you'd rarely ever see that, that kind of a mistake happening nowadays. So anyway, those parts go in the ear. Um, you've got your transmitting um, thick tube, so this uh, kind of acts like insulation for the sound as it goes through, and it stops contaminating sound from the outside from affecting your signal as it comes through. The bell and diaphragm, the reason we have two different sides to it is they're purported to pick up different frequencies. So the diaphragm side, you can see that there, uh, the diaphragm side uh, picks up high frequencies and the bell side picks up uh, lower frequencies. And you can switch from one to the other by twisting the tube. I don't know if you can see that hole opening at the top there and then closing back. That's um, selecting which side of the apparatus I want to use. Um, the other thing that might surprise you is that it's not just for listening to hearts. We also use it, for example, to listen over your neck. And what we're listening for there is to see if we can hear something called a carotid brui, which tells us that the blood vessel is uh, getting narrowed. Um, other areas that we might use it on is on your belly to listen to bowel sounds, hyperactive movement, such as in diarrhea, or lack of movement. For example, if you had um, uh, an obstruction. Uh, the other common place on the chest, of course, besides the heart, is also listening to your lungs. And from the lungs, we can hear pus moving around, which we call crackles, or um, fluid buildup, which we call creps. And we can also hear narrowing of the airways, which we call wheezing. And um, most doctors still use this uh, type of mechanical version, but then there's also a more modern version, which is an electronic one. As you can see here, uh, this would be kind of more top the line one. This one doesn't have a bell. It's built into the circuitry, so you can select whether you want bell or diaphragm using these buttons. One of the big advantages to the electronic ones is um, with this one, I have to accept whatever sound is given to me. With this one, I can turn up the volume so I can amplify the signal. Now, for a lot of doctors, um, like myself included, we typically don't even bother using the bell. It's usually cardiologists who need a lot of uh, fine tuning of sound that use both sides. Most family doctors and doctors you would see emerge usually just rely on, on the diaphragm. So that in, in essence or in a nutshell is um, some interesting facts about our most important tool in our arsenal, the stethoscope. Thank you for watching and stay well.